All right, so welcome back for another round of Maya. So this is sort of a continuation from the last video where we created that complex looking like rope mesh. And now it's just a matter of, okay, so now you've created this really nice looking rope. Can you do anything with it? Of course you can, of course. So what you what I did was I went online, searched a bunch of videos, and somebody was able to show me exactly how to create um, that rope-like feel and then attach it to a some objects and then have it um, just kind of go, you know, back and forth. And I figured, oh, I might as well pass it along to everyone else. So this is exactly the result you get when you do that. So watch this. So now we've created this rope and it's actually attached to both of these objects, sort of kind of going back and forth. I actually have a preset um, attached to it. So that's probably why it's moving at a slower pace. So if you go to your settings here, you can see you have a bunch of really interesting, you know, options like airbag, beach ball, burlap, chain mail, honey, silk, putty, rubber, you know, the list goes on and on. So it's just a matter of what you want to go with. But this is exactly what you can do with that rope and sort of have it go back and forth and then add a bunch of, you know, other um, features to it. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's just exit out and destroy the scene and start fresh. So the first thing I did was created some cubes. So just set that up right there. Top view. So we can go ahead and center this over. And then same thing, duplicate. And maybe I'll just make this one a little longer. There we go. And then just thin it out. Okay, so once we have these set to exactly how we want it, now we can go ahead and create that rope. So let me just get rid of that grid, go to our top view. In fact, I might want it back. And then, of course, our favorite tool, the EP curve tool. And then this is where we'll, go, this is where we'll create our simple looking rope. So something like that, that's pretty simple. Demonstrated purposes, obviously, so I'm not gonna go too detailed. So once you've created your curve, you're gonna go ahead and go to your curve tab and create a curved circle. And then just sort of place it at the edge of the, of the line. And then once you've done that, rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. Go back to your, your perspective mode. And then center it to exactly how you want it. And then I guess size it down depending on how small or big you want the width of the rope to be. So, all right, that seems pretty good. So go ahead and select your circle and your curve, and then go to your surfaces, extrude, and then I usually go ahead and just sort of reset it to the initial options and then apply. Now, unfortunately, deselected it though, so. Try it again. There we go. So now we have our rope created and ready to go. But unfortunately, it's set at a, at a NURB. So now we're going to have to convert that to a poly. So let me just go ahead and go to con modify, convert NURBs to polygons. And then same thing, make sure you have the settings that reset to its initial um, presets. And then for type, go to quads. And then for tessellation method, go to standard fit. And then I don't think you need to really worry about any of these other options. And then apply. And there you go. So once you've done that, central pivot. Let's bring this out. And now you have a nice looking rope. It's sort of squarish, but yeah, it's okay. Nothing too extravagant. This is only for a demonstrative purpose. So we'll delete those. And that as well. And now we have this as the base for our rope. So we'll rotate this on the 90 degree axis, go to our top view, make sure it's underneath both of these squares. Then we'll go to our front view. And then we'll have to sort of shrink this down a bit to a reasonable size length. Mm, there we go, that's good. Okay, so once you have basically this you have your curve your your curved out mesh and the two um, cubes underneath it. This is where the fun starts to begin. So now we're going to have to 
somehow transform this uh, this curve into a sort of a rope-like fashion. And this is where we can come in and uh, apply the end cloth setting. This is where it really start, gives you a really interesting result. So go to your end cloth tab and then click the first option of the shirt. So now you have selected the um, curve mesh into an end cloth. However, um, since, you know, for this kind of per, um, demonstration, I do actually want to make sure that the bottom piece um, affects the top as well, or the, the, uh, the rope as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just undo that and then select both of them and then apply an end cloth setting. So now let's go ahead to our time slider right here. Instead of 48 frames, let's go to maybe like 100 and extend it. We can see our animation play out. All right, so, you know, sort of, you know, nothing really happening at that point because, first of all, we don't have the rope attached to anything. And then also there's a gravity applied to the, to the mesh as well. So that's what's ultimately casting it downward. So in order for us to not ha let that happen, we have to constrain the rope to these two objects. So this is where another um, fun part begins. So go ahead and select your uh, rope and make sure you have this set underneath both of these objects. And then also just make sure that, you know, if you want it in the middle, you have to just move it in that position versus if you want it somewhere over here, you know, you can have it start over there. So, so go to your front view kind of zoom in on here and then we're going to go ahead and to our vertex mode select all the verts on the top and then you're going to select the cube right here and then we're going to put in a constraint on the object so in your end cloth settings right here you can go ahead in fact if you want you can go to your end dynamics tab and then you can still do the same thing add a constraint to it so there you go Okay, so for this one though, we're going to, we'll just use the um, option right here, which is going to be selecting the points and then adding a collision, adding and an, um, a collision object to a constraint. So this will prevent it from going anywhere. So we just select those, and then there we go. So now what happens is once we play the animation, the rope will be attached to the top piece, which will prevent it from falling. However, if we don't attach it to the bottom piece, that piece is just going to fall, and then this is just going to dangle, which wouldn't make any sense, and be sort of mundane. So same thing, select the verts, select the object, attach the constraints, and there you go. So now let's go ahead and let's see if we can increase this to 200, so we can sort of play it out to its full extent, and then let's just play it. And there we go. So, you know, sort of interesting, you know, good result. Definitely, uh, you know, you know, I guess the bottom piece, you know, you could probably maybe add some more weight to it, but at the same time, I think it looks pretty neat when you add that constraint to it. At the same, yeah, see, that's the, the, the initial thing is we added that end cloth option to this um, cube, which will allow it to sort of ha let that dangling sort of fe um, feel, um, have it be applied to it. So now we can go ahead and sort of play with some of the features with I was showing you before at the beginning. So we can go into our um, select your object, and then we're going to go into our end cloth one uh, end cloth shape one option, and then we have the presets right here, which will give you us uh, some options as far as what we can, you know, have the rope you know act like. Well, let's say for an example we have it act like I don't know honey. Let's go ahead and just replace it all. And then it sort of gives you a description of what this will do. And then just kind of see for yourself. So when we have it apply a honey option to it, it sort of gives it that really gooey, sticky feel to it. As if it's being stretched and stretched and stretched, and yet, you know, you're getting it in that honey-like fashion. So pretty nifty stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe add a... I don't know, uh, some silk. Price that and see what that does. All right, silk usually kind of gives it that 
sort of clothy like feel to it, so that's pretty neat. Uh, let's go with our chainmail. I don't know if this would be any different. Well, I guess it's just a little bit more rougher on the edge. Uh, let's go with a solid rubber. So this one, yeah, a lot more stiff, not as curvy, not as, you know, you know, not as interesting, I guess. So, but you can go ahead and just sort of play around with all these settings here. And then if you want to add some more, if you want this to, I guess, add more uh, gravity to it, you can go ahead and instead of going from 9.8, we can go to, let's say, 100. But then watch what you get as a result. You know, now you got this thing going all over the place, so it doesn't seem very, you know, plausible. So that's probably why you would probably maybe decrease it to say maybe 20, and then gives it a little bit more life to it. Though I don't see how it, you know, see this part right here doesn't really make any sense when it sort of comes up at an angle. So maybe at its initial setting, we'll just give it a 10. And then, you know, you have other options as well. I mean, air density, wind speed, you know, if you want it to like, let's say be windy out, you can change to like maybe 10. And then as it's dangling, you know, you have it sort of going in one direction versus the other. So now it seems like it's actually going in, um, you know, going from, you know, east to west or whatever, so. And then if you want to add more to it, you know, the more you add, the faster, um, you know, it goes, or the, the the wackier it goes as well, so, but pretty nifty stuff, so. Well, that's pretty much it. I'll let you guys kind of go over the rest as far as what you want to do with it, but that's pretty much the basic lowdown of how to now create your rope and sort of give it that rope-like feeling, so. Other than that, that's all I have for you, and hopefully this was helpful for you. If not, my apologies. Other than that, enjoy.